Hello my quilting friends! Leah Day here with a new sewing machine review. Today I want to share a review of the Grace Cunique 14 Plus. I've been quilting on this machine every week in videos shared on Sundays, our Sit Down Quilting Sunday series, but I think it's finally time to share an official review of what I love about this machine, some of its quirks, and how I quilt on it every week. So to get started, one of the major advantages of having a table mounted long arm like this is the harp space. So there are 15 inches from the back of the machine to the needle. That's 15 inches of space there. This is something that a lot of quilters struggle with. You know, a home sewing machine can have anywhere from four to, I think the max I've seen on a home sewing machine is uh, 11 to 13 inches of harp space. And for those bigger machines with bigger harp space, you're talking multiple thousands of dollars. <laughs> the bigger the machine, the more expensive it is. But for this one, 15 inches from in this harp space, that's relatively small for a long arm. And the reason that's good is that keeps the price down. While it's not a huge amount of space, you are gonna see an enormous difference in how easy it is to quilt your quilts and shift them around as you're moving the quilt underneath the needle. So a big reason why I like using a table mounted long arm is it does feel easier to quilt. It feels like less of a wrestling match. Uh, there's less strain on your shoulders and your neck when you're using a long arm because you're not having to fight and pull that quilt through the arm of the machine. Now, I've been quilting on a home sewing machine for years and there's nothing wrong with that. But this is one of those situations that I started looking at the prices and home sewing machines have steadily gone up in price while long arms have steadily come down in price. And to me that kind of seemed, well, why would I go buy a machine with only an 11 inch harp space when I could get a long arm with a 15 inch harp space for less, you know? And then it would be specifically designed for quilting. So that is something that a long arm is. It is specifically designed for free motion quilting. This machine does not have feed dogs. So it's not gonna work like your regular home sewing machine. You will not be able to put a piecing foot on this machine and piece you know, scraps together and make quilt blocks. This is only for quilting the layers of your quilt together. And because of that, there's only free motion quilting and ruler foot quilting for this machine. When you decide to use rulers, you'll need to use the slightly thicker rulers that are designed for long arms because you'll have a foot with a much thicker base and those will work really, really well together. So it's really designed for free motion quilting for ruler foot quilting. You can't do walking foot quilting on this machine because obviously there's no feed dogs. <laughs> so that just totally wouldn't work. Uh, so as far as features, this machine is really streamlined. It's very, very simple. When I turn it on, and there's just a switch over here on the side, I'll flick it on. So really bright lights come on here, and I've actually put a, um, I put a little shield on these lights so that way they're not quite as bright as they could be because it was flashing out my cameras just a little too bright. They're that bright, like almost blindingly bright. So uh, I have put a little uh, cover over the lights and they're still extremely bright. So that lets you know just how nice and well lit your quilt's gonna be under the needle. Uh, that little click was just like kind of the reset, you know, that's just telling you that it's on and it's ready to go. And that's pretty much it. You just turn it on and start quilting. Uh, I have a foot pedal that's plugged in that's below the machine. As a set down long arm, the way I have mine set up here in a table, there is no stitch regulator. There is no monitor. There is no way of limiting your speed or controlling the stitches, anything like that. It's very streamlined and simple. But you know, I really like that about this machine because my experience with other machines that have more bells and whistles is that sometimes those bells and whistles can break or they can inconsistently work. I would rather have a machine that's simpler, that only has one or two things, like turn it on and go, than have things that are con constantly breaking or malfunctioning. Uh, the one thing that I would say is absolutely essential and I love about this machine is it does have a needle down and needle up. What you do is you tap the back of the foot pedal 
And if you just tap it once, then that will bring the needle down. If you tap it again, it'll bring the needle up. So you can just kind of take one stitch at a time if you need to, or just bring the needle up. That's really important for free motion quilting. It really helps you be able to stop always with the needle in the down position and reposition the quilt without it shifting away from you. But you know, it's one thing to talk about this. Let me get on the machine and actually show you how it stitches on this quilt panel. So I'm quilting on this cheater cloth panel. This is a building blocks cheater cloth panel. And I'm just stitching around the star. And I wanna showcase that needle up, needle down feature because it's so important to me. So basically if I tap the heel, then the needle pops up. And if I tap the heel, of the foot pedal again, the needle will pop down. So that's a really important feature. I think it's essential to have that because it allows you to always end with your needle in the down position. It allows you to bring the thread up to the top really quick and easy. And it's just one of those things that if I didn't have that, then it really wouldn't work out all that well. I wouldn't be a happy camper. So I want you to notice just how much speed control I have on this machine. And a lot of this was just practice. It was quilting a lot of quilts and I have quilted several projects on this machine so far. And really more than anything else, it was just practice. It was continuing to quilt even when I was making ugly stitches, even when things were inconsistent. And you know, stitching on mark lines like this is always gonna be a little slow. It's always gonna be just a little bit tedious. That's just the nature of this style of quilting because I'm wanting to stay right on that line. I don't wanna obviously wiggle off into some miscellaneous direction. I wanna just stitch nice and clean all the way around this star. So the speed that you're seeing is not a stitch regulator. This is a question I get like every single week. I'm not using a stitch regulator. This is my foot on a foot pedal and my hands moving the quilt, that's it. When you move the machine to a quilting frame, that's when you can get a stitch regulator, but you don't have one whenever it's a table mounted or set down long arm, the way I have mine set up here where my hands are moving the quilt under the needle. So one thing I have noticed is that even though it's a long arm, some directions and angles can be a little finicky, but really it's nothing, it's not nearly as bad as some of the sewing machines I've had over the years. So, you know, little quirks like that, you just have to kind of, I guess the best thing is you just have to start to really pay attention to those kinds of things and watch directions, watch certain angles that the machine is stitching in but really I haven't had very many stitch issues. I haven't had very many skip stitches or thread breaks on this machine at all. And uh, one thing that I think is really important is to understand how to install your needle properly. So I'm gonna break thread right here just so that you can do this too. So I've just taken out the needle on this machine and I want you to see that the needles are completely round. They don't have a flat side and that can make them just a little bit tricky to install into the machine. So I'm gonna install this right now, lift that needle bar up all the way. And here's something that's really important. It's important to get the needle all the way inside the machine. I ran into an issue with this. All of a sudden I started getting really bad skip stitches. I was like, well, what's the problem? And I looked up and there's like a little hole right here in that needle bar. And you should be able to see the top of your needle come all the way up into that hole. So it allows you to see if the needle is fully seated. Now the other thing that you need to look for is there's a little groove on the needle. It's like a channel that runs down the length you need that to be facing, when your machine is set up like mine, you need that to be facing the left or uh, the opposite direction from your motor, <laughs> basically. So that looks good. And then now I'm gonna tighten it down with that screw. Now that I've replaced the needle, let's re-thread the machine together. So you go through the top hole and then I go around to the next hole in this little spoke thing at the top. And just pull on that to make sure it doesn't get tangled. And then through this hole above this up upper tension dial and then through the dial and then through the next hole. 
And I'm threading the machine with isocord thread, my favorite thread, of course. Uh, I have done some other thread tests though, so definitely check out the video on that so you can see how I work with other threads on this machine. So now that's threaded all the way through, but my thread's getting a little long, so I'm gonna clip it off so that way it's not so unwieldy. There we go. All right, so now I'm gonna go through the tension discs, pull it tight, and then over this little black bar on the tension disc, then through this loop. I found that this one is really important. If you skip that one in particular, you can start seeing some issues. So watch out for that. And then through this top. So we go through this guide, this guide, then through the top, pull it out, then through this guide. So those are all very obvious. Then we're gonna go around kind of a loop-de-loop -loop around that one. And then now I'm gonna close in a little bit tighter, zoom in so that we can see the needle. So I've gone through the loop-de-loop -loop, and now there's one more guide and it's right above the needle. So slip that through and you can see it's right above the needle here. You wanna make sure to hit this one. I found that when I skipped that one, when I forgot about it, I ended up getting some skip stitches. So if you start noticing any kind of thread issue, chances are you might have missed a guide on the machine. With the machine re-threaded and that needle reset, I'm just going to pull up my bobbin thread and tuck it underneath the foot. And then I just use the hand wheel to drop the needle back down into the machine. I'm just kind of put my fingers on top of those thread tails so I know they're not gonna go anywhere. And then take my next stitches slow and carefully. So that's how you re-thread the machine and change a needle. I also have another video on working with the bobbin area and cleaning and oiling the machine as well. Now I'm sure you're wondering about my quilting setup. I have my Grace Cunique set up in the quilty table. It's a flatbed table that's designed for holding long arms, but you could probably put a home sewing machine in it too. And it has an insert cut out so that way it fits nice and tight around the machine. And that just gets everything on a nice flush surface so that way I can quilt uh, I'm moving the quilt under the needle. It's called a table mounted or sit down long arm when it's set up like this. Now to make the quilt even easier to move, I have my little clamping system set up here. So this is a simple clamp from the hardware store with a simple bungee cord. I just drilled a hole so that way the bungee cord could slot through. And then the bungee cord is connected to my curtain rod, which is right over the window. So really, really simple. And it elevates the quilt, as you can see, to take the weight off of it. And that makes it even easier to move around in free motion. So that's pretty much it for how I have the machine set up. I really love having set up in this room. This is an upstairs office in my house. And it's just really nice to be able to pop in here and do a little bit of quilting, you know, work on my own personal projects and be able to get that little bit of stitching time in. You know, anytime I'm waiting on the guys or whatever, I can just sit down and get some quilting time in. I really love that about this machine. It's so easy, it's so streamlined and simple to use. I never have to question or worry that I'm gonna get bad tension or something's gonna go wrong on it. It's just so reliable. And that's one of the main reasons I really love it. Now, I wanna be really upfront and honest about something, and that is my partnership with Grace Company. We are working together. So they sent me this machine so that I could create awesome videos. And I, in return, have been making awesome videos. And that's been really mutually beneficial. It's helped both of us out a lot. But I really wanted to pass some of that along to you. So we've been working on a new program and a little discount. So if you're at all interested in the Grace Cunique and you'd like to learn more about it or consider buying one, make sure to call Grace Company. Give them a call on the phone. And whenever you talk to them, say, Leah Day told you to say, hello, my quilting friends. And if you say that, then they'll give you an extra special discount on your Grace Cunique or anything that you decide to invest in from Grace Company. So that not only helps me out and helps me continue to make awesome videos, but also lets me know that you are enjoying my videos and that you trust my opinion. I'll be honest, I have worked with other companies that have been really shady about their customer service. And uh, I've run into issues and pretty much been told that they would only fix it for me and they wouldn't fix it for anyone else. And that's really discouraging. And I just, 
Ultimately, I decided I couldn't use a machine unless I was comfortable with someone going out and buying it because that's oftentimes what happens even without my intending it, <laughs> you know? It's like people see the videos and they wanna go get that machine and I understand that. So I was really looking for a company that I could work with that would be spot on with the customer service and sort out issues when they happen. So the first machine that I got actually had a little fault. It had a problem with the switch. And so after the first few weeks of having it, it cut off and wouldn't come cut back on again. It wouldn't turn back on again. And I, for a little while, I was afraid that I had broken it because <laughs> I wasn't using a surge protector. And I hurriedly went and got a surge protector, of course, and tried to turn it back on again and it still wouldn't come back on. And so I contacted the company, I felt terrible. It's like, I think I might've broken it. And they said, oh no, it's probably just a faulty switch. We can fix that, no problem, but let's send you a new machine so that you don't have to stop quilting. So within only a few days, I had a new machine. I sent back the other one, it got fixed and you know, that's to me a sign of excellent customer service, a company that really stands behind their machines. And you know the fact that they're open to letting me say that and share that with you and be open about our partnership. There are a lot of quilters out there using machines provided by a company and they're not allowed to say that. You know, they're not allowed to be transparent about it. And that's really important to me. I made that clear whenever we began this partnership and I continue it now. So please understand that I used this machine and it was provided by Grace Company and I highly recommend it. If I had to go out and buy it today, if they said, hey Leah, we want that machine back, I'd be like writing a check. <laughs> no, it's mine, I'm keeping it. And that's how I feel about it. And I absolutely stand behind these machines and the awesome company behind it. So. If you're at all interested in a Grace Cunique, if you are in the market for a, a long arm or a frame or anything along those lines, make sure to call the company and make sure to mention Leah Day said, hello my quilting friends, and they'll give you an extra special discount just for me. So I hope that you've enjoyed this review and found it helpful. If you have any questions, please post in the comments below. Please like the video, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe to our channel on YouTube so you don't miss the next video coming out soon. Until next time, let's go quilt.